Welcome to No Smoke TV. Today we have a gentleman from the A&E Hit Show, 60 Days In, Season 5, Abner in the building. How you doing, Thank brother? you, thank you, you my today? brother. Thank you. Feeling good, man. You already know quarantine vibes. Quarantine vibes, quarantine vibes. That's what you that's what your night's looking like tonight. Yeah, yeah. Just doing some little home remodeling. I've been doing it for a couple months now, but just maintaining. How is that home um remodeling going? Like it's that, it's going out like, right. The equity looking good right now. I mean, hopefully we we be moving out. September or something, down south or something, but... Oh, that's the plan, down south, where it's cheap at. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. North Carolina or something. Because <laughs> right now you're upstate. Yeah, I'm upstate. I'm about an hour outside New York City. I've been out here a couple years now. But, okay, but how was it like growing up in Brooklyn? Brooklyn was different vibes when I was growing up. I'm 47, so it was more like... The, the gangs is more like... The movie Warriors, you know what I mean? Really? Something like that. Like it was like you had the Decepticons, you had, you know, you didn't have like Bloods, Cribs, Latin Kids. It was just, you know, young assassinated. It was different, different vibes growing up at that time, you know? Different names too. I you were saying different names, I didn't even heard of. Yeah, yeah. It was it was back in the day. I used to go to John Jay High School. I see you grew up like a little hard, so how many, if you don't mind me asking, how many times was you arrested growing up? I got about 30 arrests. 30? 30. 30 arrests and uh, three, I got two violent felony conviction and one drug conviction. So I was one step away from getting a career criminal on, on a third violent felony. Was that cause of your area or that was just in you? Nah, anywhere I move, it was pretty much, you know, I go with the flow, you know, it, it's just, you know, you, you can leave the hood, but the hood never leaves you, you know? And it's like, you just used to it. I, I just got used to, you know, being, you know, getting easy money. I went from selling dope to, you know, sticking dudes up, you know? And it was just normal to me, you know? Something you was used to. It was like a routine. Oh, yeah. Everybody, you know, that, that I was around would do it. You know what I mean? I had no problem sticking anybody up, regardless of who they was or or how violent they were. I mean, I was lost, you know? And what's this? This was in the 90s, right? Yeah, this was in the 90s. I would say uh, mid-90s, like 1994, 1993, gotcha. when I started, you know. And I see in your last, in the last time you was um, locked up, what changed you was some, like a CEO gave you a Bible and it, like it changed your whole, like, yeah, huh? I, I I was upstate New York. I was in uh Georgetown. They closed it down, and um then from Georgetown they they sent me to ASAC, KSAC. I think it was Butler, and they closed that down. So I ended up going to a Wyoming, and then um uh, I got shipped out there again to a max, and um I got into an altercation. It wasn't even me. It was just you know gang politics and whatnot. And one of the ones of my own got cut by one of my own. And it was like, they did a whole thing and I ended up going to the box. So when I was in the box for a year, my last year before coming home, you know, I had given a, a seal a hard time, you know, cause it was like, that's what you're doing there. You, you, you don't do got nothing better else to do, especially you a year in SHU, you know? And um, he gave me a Bible. You know, it was like at two, three o'clock in the morning. And I started reading the Bible, you know, and I was pretty much at the end of my rope. You know, I, I just wanted it, it, it committing suicide was was like, was, was a given, you know what I mean? It really? was like, yeah, it was like, I got tired of just doing it, you know, like proving myself to people, doing what you do, you know, cause people might get an image from someone, especially now, like, oh, yo, that dude's hardcore, that, that's a real dude. You know, you get the different image of what being real is, you know what I mean? And, and I just got tired of it, you know? And I look at real now as somebody that gets up, go to work and, you know, does what they gotta do. Exactly. But being real was like doing the things I was doing, you know? Back in the day. Back in the days, and, and you know, like, now anybody, everybody's real. 
everybody's real. You know what I mean? You get on social media. Social media. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a real <laughs> dude. Yo, that's a, you don't you don't know people. You know what I mean? And and, and you just kind of you know hum, gotta humble yourself sometimes. Yeah, I, I believe that that's what's kept me alive all these years, man. Being humble. You know. Yeah, being humble. I had you know my 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 problems in the street and. I shot people, people shot at me. And it was like, I think being humble was the mediator between me and God and, and that moment, me being, my, getting my life taken. That's crazy that you've been through all that and they still let you in the show. How was yeah, it? They, how was it like getting the show? Like, did you sign up? Like, did you, did you cast for it and everything? Nah, I'm one of the first members that never cast it for anything. I never even really heard of the show. You know, and I really? put this out there because the contract's over. But I had never even heard of the show. I was like a 48 hours type of dude. And I would see things here and there. I'm like, and I would see the show, but just glance off like, man, that's, these dudes, for real, a cop in jail or, or whatever in jail. Or, you know, I'm like, man, what is this show? Like, <laughs> man, this is stage. So I never paid mind to it. And, uh, you know, I was just living my life, doing what I do. And uh, they reached out to me through, uh, I had Facebook at the time. I only have now Instagram, but I had Facebook at the time. And um, I was just doing like church stuff and whatnot. And um, they hollered at me and I thought it was like like a joke, you know. You know, and I signed the, the waiver or whatever, you know. And um, they wow. told me about the show and the the, the producer, the head producer, the director, Greg Henry, he pretty much told me, you, you're the only one that pretty much didn't reach out to us. You know, like, I'll keep it 100. I didn't. I didn't have no need to go on and, and be on reality TV for what, you know? And and I did it, but it was just to, to bring a different, you know, atmosphere and a different view to what being in jail is, even though it's different from being in Rikers Island or upstate or wherever, you know, it, it's just a county. So I figured, you know, after consulting with my family and, and God, I was like, I'll do it, you know? I, I know it was like a cakewalk to you because you you did that already. So I know it was like cakewalk to you because I remember yeah. watching the show and seeing you walk through it, like you, as soon as you started the show, like you ran the whole pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I tried to bring a, a more of a leadership role to it, you know, and a lot, I get a lot of hate and all that. And sometimes I feel like I should have put more work in just to shut regular people up because it's regular people that comment on it and want to say something and, you know, and, and you know, I, I'm a man of God, but at the end of the day, if, if my life feels threatened, I will use force, extreme force. And especially in my household, you know, and, and people just, like, oh, you was trying to do this. I wasn't trying to do nothing. I was trying to show you what it's like you being around me in prison or jail. And you know, you got these 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 little internet thugs or whatever, you know, computer cadets. And um, you said computer it's like, like, yeah, like, you know, it's like you go to the island, you go to C-74, man, you're getting your sneakers taken. You're getting a razor put in your face and you dropping it, like, for real. And, and they don't understand this, that these are the type of people that live there. Like, that's their home. You just a visitor. So I was a visitor in Pinal County, you know, and I wanted to show a different view of not trying to figure out how to do time, but how to do time. You know what I mean? Because after being locked up 30 times and having handcuffs on me, I mean, I already know what, what meal was going to happen <laughs> that day, <laughs> you know? So, so in the in the show, what made you um slap, when you slapped that kid, don't like, you slapped the shit out of him. Yeah. Like, what was that? It, it was more of, it was more like a, because I was always like a, more like a reaction dude. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was a real calm dude in the street. Like, it, for me to pull out a weapon and use it, you had to really like, do but something. I'm more like a reflex with him. I was like, like, I wanted to talk to him and tell him, yo, listen, you're not built for this. Like, stop. Take your little county little time and, and go home. And you know, because he didn't understand what it's like behind a wall. 
Because if he would have got convicted and went over the wall, what was going to happen? You know what I mean? And I, I'm just trying to like save it. It was just the, the emotions, you know, because oh, I'm you're... quick. Yeah, it was it was more my emotions and the past and everything. And it was more like a reflection of myself, like, you know, like, like myself, talking to myself. It was not to, towards him. I didn't have no animosity towards him. You know, I, I, I gave him a hug and, and cried with him. You know, ain't he ain't gonna oh, okay, show that. Cool, cool. They just wanna show what they wanna show, what was, what, what people, you know. So if they really wanted to show, they could have just signed everybody a waiver and gave me a banger. And I, I would have definitely <laughs> ripped something, you know, like, like. Nah, they, but that. I know they would have locked you up for that. You can't, I know it was- Yeah, no, oh, definitely. I was, I was like, talking uh, to, um, you know, Johnny Ramirez? Yeah, yeah, I was talking yeah. to him and he said, you had to, like, you had to provoke something for like to use force in there. Yeah, and I did, I did. There was a lot of situations that they didn't show. Cause a lot of people like, yo, you was bullying little kids or whatever. Nah, it was, it was some, some real grown man, me pushing buttons and it never swung or nothing. So it was like, and they started catching on like, nah, this dude, this dude has to be from the show because he keeps testing everybody. Did you get in trouble and, for uh, that? Not really. The, the kid ain't pressed no charges. And Sheriff Lamb, he's a different breed, man. He he real gully with it. Okay, so, okay. And, and, and it was a, a between a fine line, you know. And on top of that, that footage was used on A and E, not the camera from the facility. So uh, it happened. Okay. It happened on a blind spot. So they can't use the footage from A and E to convict me of anything, charge you anything. Yeah. Right. That's why I made sure I always went in that little room where everybody Not go you. to a little blind spot. You know, let's Not get it on. You know, and that that was basically it. You know, but it, I I really didn't. You know, I really didn't feel like 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 it was to an extent like. You know, I would have probably went to the box or something, 30 days or whatever, but well, I'm doing 60 days. <laughs> what you going? Yeah, you'll be out by the time it's over. Yeah. <laughs> what you gonna do? Film me in the box? <laughs> you know. And I heard that they don't show like they didn't show a lot of the good that y'all was doing in there. Like nah, they didn't. They didn't, man. It was uh we had a meeting and uh rest in peace, uh, you know. One of the, the the members that that previous members that that died, he committed suicide. Oh yeah, I heard. Nate, he he was oh. there, and they didn't show that footage. So I'm like, why are you not showing that footage? You know, especially now. You know, a lot of people looked up to him. You know, what I mean, he he did his thing. You know, for two seasons, and um, and they had even asked me to do two seasons too, and I, I said no, <laughs> but. There was a lot of footage that they could have used. You know, I pray for for dudes that had addiction in there, talk to them, counsel. They know, you know, and I, I feel I feel some type of way with them that you know, okay, cool, let's let's get the numbers, that let's get the money, and you know, but you know, I bought a little house with my money, and you know, and that's what I, I I did, you know, what I got out of it. But what I really wanted it was to to help people. You know what I mean? The investment part of it is fine because. That comes from street, but I, I really did it just to to help people. You know what I mean? Rather, if you are a person that's never been to jail or a person that's been in jail or are in that situation, you know, like there's other ways, you know, to to live, you know. And I seen with all that happening, you like you became a state chaplain, a minister and a regular Red Cross volunteer. I yeah, know, yeah. And I seen that. Like, what's making all this happening? Like, is this just something you feeling and you just just going with it? Or this is nah, something you it was, always wanted to do? No, it was always it was always God's timing, man. Like people just genuinely, genuinely love me. You know, you got people like fans and stalkers or whatever, but you got genuine people that love me, that know me on a personal, like, hey, you know. And, and I know, man, I, I know police commissioner. I know, you know, cops, family that, that became police even after the show. And I just know people and it's just always people gravitated to me and like, yo, you want to be a chaplain? You know, hey man, but I got a record, you know? 
but I just genuinely help people. That's just that's just the the, the tag with it. But anybody could be a champion and help people. You know what I mean? And, and just sometimes some people take that like, yo, you a champion. You're not supposed to do that. Nah, you know, I, I, I'm a human being. Like, you don't you don't even know what a champion is for you to even be saying that. You think it's a pastor or something like? No, it's just. A, a person that ministers to all and anybody can minister, you know, it's just, I, I became an author, you know, one, one day I met the publisher at church. Everything was God's timing. I came out on 700 club, God's timing, you know, it's just, you know, even the background acting too, that I, I've been doing, but. Oh, you've been that, acting you know? too? Yeah, I, I came nice. out with a, I've done a couple of background shows. I've tried to get, you know, but pre COVID, so now I'm going to take my vaccine and get back and get Ooh. on my grind. You know what I mean? And I, I got a, a couple of ideas that I want to do for the fans. You know what I mean? Because people generally gravitate. So they're like, yo, Abner, what are you going to do? And, you know, and, and this is without A&E's help or whatever. Because they pretty much, yes, they, you. they wash you up. Yeah, they wash you up and keep it moving. You know what I mean? But, I mean, people just genuinely love me. You know what I mean? Love it or hate it. They did and give you, you know, a platform, I, though. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I, I had left social media. I had all combined whole thousands of fans, but I just left social media pre-COVID, and it, it wasn't about the the fans or not. Because people right now that I know, you know, they 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 know me before the show even, you know. But it, it's, it's just you know, I'm, I'm humble that I could help somebody when they kind of like shot, you know, like I. I I could go anywhere. As soon as I talk, hey, you know, they recognize the voice, which is is crazy. Cause powerful. This, Very powerful. this, yeah, it's, this is happened years ago. So it's like, wow, you you recognize my voice. What was what's the difference between my voice and other people's voice? He was, they like, nah, you that guy from sixty days in, you know. And I, I even got it the other day. I, I get it all the time, you know. But it's just, it's just I'm just humbled by it. You know what yeah. I mean? You stuck out in that show. You was definitely like the main person in that show, season five, for real. <laughs> yeah, Netflix bought it. I mean, you had the big, you had the biggest character. Girl. Yeah, it, and it was crazy because the one thing that I I took when I went in before I went in there was my brother's advice. He was like, just don't look at the camera, act like they're not even there. Just go in your own world, man. And, and that's what I did. You know, I I. You know, till the last moment, even when I tapped out, it was like at two in the morning. I had to wait till like nine in the morning. I didn't care. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I felt like, let me just snuff one of these dudes. But <laughs> I was like, they might press charges. You know what I mean? Because people are like, oh, no, you this. Nah, I, I really, I really will put hands on somebody. Like and That's messed up because you in the show and you in that predicament and they, you get charges pressed on you while you in the show. Yeah, that's, that's what- That's crazy. That's what at the end of the, the rope, when I was in there, I was like, nah, it's over. It's over, it, you know, like, call it what you want to call it, say what you want to say, but nah, I'm, I'm going back home to the, to the birds. <laughs> like, nah, I'm good, you know? Would you do it again? Yeah, I would do it again by myself. I, I would definitely do it again by myself. I want- what, what you mean? Like, what like, you do? I want my no show. No, yeah, I would do the show with no Cody fans, basically. Oh, you know what I mean? So it'd just be about you. No, but like, I don't even want to meet them. You know what I mean? Like, go ahead. Like, let them figure it out. Like, I don't want that extra footage that they did that, yo, meet me, this guy, meet David, meet Mark, me, whoever. No, I don't want to meet nobody. Just let me go by myself. You know did what I mean? Let me. Did that mess any up? Jail. Did that mess up your whole like time while you was doing the 60 days? Like you knowing that they was from the show? Yeah, yeah. Cause I I I I really didn't feel comfortable. I really didn't even see the the benefit of meeting anybody where I, I, I really don't roll with you. I don't I don't live with you. I never met you. Like we never broke bread. Like I'm I want my mission and you do your mission. So why even sit here and do the extra footage? And I know it's for for TV, but when it when it comes to it, I think I could have got more accomplished 
not knowing in the back of my head, like, yo, if something happens, that whatever, you know? Because, I mean, they are who they are, but at the end of the day, I don't need nobody to go with me to jail. Like, <laughs> I go by myself, you know? Yeah. And the, and the main thing out of all this is the path you in right now. Like, you spreading God's word. You all about, like, positivity, everything, so. Yeah, no, Let's definitely. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more, I'm definitely, I, I can't even stand negativity and having people, like, coming in my DM, draining me or whatever. Like, man, just get away from me, man. Like, I, I don't got time for that. Like, like I'm li I, I, I don't live that way. You know what I mean? I always believe if if you're gonna be negative, you might go on the street. Go go be negative. It's plenty out there. You could do whatever. But when somebody's trying to help other people, if you can't motivate me, then you know we can't vibe. We we we, we really don't click. You know what I mean? Energy's off. We can't you can't be around me. Yeah, definitely. You gotta keep good energy around you, especially nowadays. Oh yeah, no, this it's a different time. <laughs> a different time we living in right now. It, this is like, you know, push come to shove, but you know, but it, it's, things got to change down in society, period. You ever think about being a motivational speaker? Or yeah, are you? yeah, I mean. Do you do I that sometimes? Yeah, but it, it's like the, the platforms that I've done it, you know, like even when I went to like the jails, or, you know, the little counties or whatever, you know, because you got to get permit, you know, permission and all that to go in there. And even youth, you know, when I preach or whatever, I never understood that it was actually like more like, you know, not preaching, but more motivational speaking. So now I've, I've gravitated to the idea of maybe I shouldn't be too religious or push religion on people. Let me just motivate them. You know, because I really don't need the category or, 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 or the badge to say, hey, I'm a chaplain or I'm this, I'm a pastor or whatever. I, I just want to do it naturally and, and motivationally, you know, speak to people. Are you do you want to have your own church? No, nah, that's that, that's up to God. Like, like, I honestly, that in my heart, church? well, I, honestly, in my heart, I know if. I was to be a pastor and, 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 and bow down to, to you know, the, the grace of God and commit, I, I won't even be on social media to tell you the truth. Gotcha. Like, I would just leave and everything goodbye and because that's how much respect I have for somebody that pastors, you know, knowing my father did it all his life, you know? Oh, your father was a pastor? Yeah, my father was a pastor and died a pastor of COVID. You know, last year. That, so it, that. yeah, no, it is it, is, and it was unexpected. He he died in the first one thousand. So it was like, he, even he didn't know how serious it was or anyone. Nobody. And knew. um, yeah, he died pastoring and and, uh, and he lived in the Bronx, but he was pastoring. I think Mount Vernon, something like that. He got sick, went home, and twenty one days later, he died in the hospital. You know, and. We had to see him through FaceTime, you know? And it's, it's, it's real. And that's the respect I have for pastoring. Because a lot of people now are just pastor. There's everywhere. You got Facebook pastors. You got women in, oh, oh I'm a pastor. My husband's a pastor. Yeah, but you in my DM. So what, 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 what kind of pastor are you? Like, I already know that side of it. So I, it would be God really bowing me down and, and, and kneeling me and saying it, it's time. But right now, you know, I'm just straight cholo and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> not right now, though. Not right now. Not, not right now. Not COVID. You know, vaccine coming tomorrow, you know. I'm taking my first shot tomorrow and, and then 21 days later, take the, the second one. <laughs> so how's the family? Married? Got kids? Yeah, I'm married. I got kids. I live with my my all my other kids are grown. I'm a grandfather, but oh wow, you a grandfather my, now? Yeah, yeah. I got five grandkids and I think two are on the way. Oh, so, that's slow. That's yeah, a lot right there. Oh yeah, I'm 47, <laughs> so people kind of you know, but everything's been good. Everything's been good. We we are in the process of relocating and um, open up a business, you know, and 
I'm just everything. Everything's good happening, you know, and, and God's been providing for us. So I mean, yeah, COVID slowed everything down. You yes, know? it did. It sucks. This COVID thing is messing up a lot of things for people. Man. Yeah, man. Especially New York. I mean, it got hit real hard. Like it's and, it's crazy. It's it's you, crazy. I, like unless you go get vaccinated too, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean. When this first happened, that was when my, you know, my father, family members passed away, all that. I remember when the the cases were real high, right? And I was real like, nah, I'm not taking no vaccine, you know? And I remember one time pulling in on the light and I see like a, a freezer truck and I see like blood dripping from the back, like blood and water. So I'm like, this is people coming from the hospital. Like, dead Damn. people, like, and it just dawned on me, like, yo, people really dying, and they think it's it's like yeah. a hoax or something. And and I was like, man, I rolled the window up. I was like, yo, you saw and, blood um, dripping? Yeah, like it was a freezer truck, like, but it had bodies in it because it was military dudes. So I'm like, why are these military dudes driving a, a a freezer truck coming from from like you know Kingston Hospital? I'm like, yo, what's what's going on here? Like, you know, and um. Man, it just got real, and I, I just decided people be like with these conspiracies and this. Listen, you got people out here party, drink, smoke, do drugs, talking about oh I don't I, I'm not taking no vaccine, you know like no it's like you 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 harming yourself already. So what is it, you know? So I figured you know what, let me just do my part, take the vaccine, and just for myself, family, and everyone else. You know what I mean? Which one you gonna take? I was thinking about Pfizer. I was thinking about the Johnson Johnson one. I like the Johnson Johnson one because it's it's a one, only one, one shot. Yeah, but it's it's only like about seventy percent. A lot of countries ban that. They even push. Yeah, they even pushing it right now. They even uh pushing the Johnson and Johnson because some people don't want to take it, and it's still effective. But the Pfizer is more effective to the strain and adolescents from like, I think it's like. 13 to like 16, they're like 100%, you know, to, uh, to you. not to get, get, you know, so it's like, I think 90 something percent, 93, 94, but the Pfizer is pretty good. That's the one I'm taking tomorrow. Oh, you take it tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow I'll take my first shot, go to CVS and boom. Well, and everybody that I know that took it. They said uh, it don't, no side effects. The second nah. shot, you feel something though. You feel like a little, yeah, yeah, no, they, I have a, a, a friend of mine that took the trials and I kid you not, he's been like over a year when he took the trial and he never got sick. And he's like, yo, hey, I don't wear a mask, nothing. I ain't ever got sick. So that's what even pushed me more like, for real? Like, yeah. I and he that. took it. He took the trial volunteer for it. <laughs> yeah, he never got sick. I kid you not. And he never wear a mask. Like he'll wear it, he gotta go to the store, whatever. But he's like, man, people be next to me with COVID on the train. I don't wow. care. I know it works. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna take it. You know? And it's true, it, it does work. And I heard it has something to do with your blood type too. You, you believe that? Nah, you, nah. you got people with conspiracy, I, <laughs> I I got nurses in my family and, and and friends that have taken it, especially the Pfizer. They don't do nothing. Like nothing. it's just nothing. It's just people like you know. Some people is a different reaction. They get a little sore or whatever. You know, it's with any vaccine, but they invested billions of dollars in this. So people are like, well, they haven't found a cure for cancer. That's because people are not pushing for it. Because if the government push and everybody's dying of cancer, they will push billions towards the research. And that's what happened with COVID. You had no choice but to push the research to help people. And they did it quick, too. Quick, quick. They had uh, 30,000 people on the trials, which my man was one of them. And I thought he was crazy at first. He was like, nah, I'm taking it, man. People are going to die for this. Your and man was, was one of the trials? Like, people that was... Yeah, he was like wow. one of the paranoid dudes, gloves, masks. And I used to make fun of him because only a couple people with, with it. I was like, man, it ain't even that serious. He's like, watch, man. I read up on it. I'm telling you, man, this is like the, the swine flu and all that. And I'm like, what? Like, you know... <laughs> 
and he was he was right. He was right, and he took it. And and much he's respect fine. to him. Much respect. Yeah, to him. He, he's fine. He got he got a lot of people now, you know, taking the, the vaccine. He's like an advocate for for Pfizer. I want one more question before we get out. Can I ask you about the show? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Did you ever feel like you was gonna tap out? Like, was you ever frustrated? Did you ever get to a moment that nah. this, I, don't need, I don't need to do this? I mean, at first it was like my family, you know what I mean? Like, I got my home, I can eat what I want, like those little things. But then I'm like, nah, cause you know, I'm like, I want people thinking like, tap out what, in a county jail? Pinal County? Like, it's not even that serious, you know what I mean? This is not even a, a murder block, you know? And it's like, at, at, at the end, I didn't even want to do it. I really wanted to just, you know, just go out with a bang. But I was just like, you know, that that side of me kicked in that's been keeping me out of jail for over 10 years. Like that, that you know, that rational. I was like, nah, I, I got to go. Like, nah, ain't nobody paying for my bail, my lawyer. I'm out of here. I got to go. But I never felt like tapping out. Like, was there ever a time that I was like, oh, scared? Well, I got to go, you know, and, and trust me, it was a couple that, you know, I don't want to mention no names. I was like, yo, and but with me, they was like, I sleep, whatever. Oh, there was a it couple was, people from the show that was scared. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, sure if you never been, if you never been in there, of course you're gonna be a little, you know, timid about. That. Yeah, but you like, man, sixty days, I, you know, and it wasn't even about the money. That was not the motivator. With me, it was more like, man, a lot of these little kids gonna gonna hear my story. You know, like. And, and, and they did. They they put it the, the way I said, not the way they wanted to. You know what I mean? Like go in like, and they twisted a little bit, but they they pretty much that was my story. That's what here's the book. Now they this did is who job. I am. Like I'm not that dude no more. I haven't even got a ticket. Like I, I'm a law-abiding citizen. Like don't don't bring that that energy around me. You know. Being a criminal and all that, you know. I'm pretty sure but, you get a lot, of, a lot of people that treat you like that too, because of the show. They expect you to act a certain way, like nah. Yeah, I'm, they, I'm they, like, yeah, like oh yo, you're, you're a pastor, yo, you're this, you're that, man. Like stop, like you know, like listen. stop with that, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a human being, like you know, and I don't let it blow my head up, like yo, you know, nah. People just genuinely get the ones that do get what I was trying to do, you know, not what I was trying to be. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't trying to be nobody. I was just doing time. Like, all right, go in there, you know, CEOs, whatever, like the food coming, commissary, whatever, you know, just, but I never felt like tapping out. Nah, I'll do it again by myself. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a pleasure talking to you, man. Nah, thank you, Smoke, and you already know, man. I'm a fan of the show. Up. I watch it all the time. Hopefully I can see Man. you in the upcoming. Oh, you say you're not doing it with nobody. You want to do it by yourself. Well, if they, 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 if they got something in, in mind to do, you know. But I, I got something planned out for the future that that's pretty much gonna surprise a lot of people. Really, you know. You can't and talk about it, of course. Yeah, no. It, it, it's like I don't want nobody to steal my idea, but um, it's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be a little different, and I, I could pass. I could. The most I can say, my, my passport's gonna have stamps on it. That's Is what it, I can say. Okay, yeah. you're gonna be flying around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're gonna be regarding jail or something? Yeah, always, always re regarding the system. And, and, and right now I just went, wanted to go a different way with what's going on with the injustice, you know, that's been going on. The injustice has been going on for in society. Prison it's just recall. now, it, it's, it, it's an awakening. Now it's like, it's, it's almost like normal, you know what I mean? A, 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 a brown person getting killed, you know, by, by a white police officer, it's almost normal. Yeah, you it, know? Got, it got normal. Yeah, and, 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 and people just want to just brush yeah. it off. Like, no, it's not like, no, nah, man, you're like, you can't just murder people like that just because. And like it's can't. nothing, yeah, forget about it, like it's nothing. Yeah, you can't just murder somebody for $20. Come on, oh, man. like you, you can't, you, you can't. Like you have no right, you have no right. When you have these pedophiles and these these dudes committing mass murders and they get coffee and donuts. Like, nah, man, stop yeah, it, man. Yeah. 
Yeah. It, it needs to stop. It needs to stop, man, because it's not going to be pretty, man. You well, know? thanks to all these phones and social media, it's start people are starting to see it. So, yeah, it's halting yeah, a little bit, little by little. Hopefully, in the future, it get better and everything. Yeah, and all of us get injustice, man. No matter what color you are, the, the system needs to change. You know. Yep. But Abner, man, it was a pleasure talking to you. Until next no, time, hopefully we can definitely. catch up when you got your next, you know, everything, your next project going on. I'll hit up. Yeah, hit definitely. You know, talk about it. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you. And you already know, straight cholo. <laughs> straight cholo. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs>